Week two of our observation beehive experiment is finished. The bees continue to work hard every day, bringing home pollen and nectar and building out the wax comb to store it in. They are devouring the supplemental food that we're giving them. And when it comes to pollen, they hit the mother load. The spring weather has brought new creatures to visit us at the hive and neighboring pastures have welcomed new life into the world. And get ready to learn the Bee Waggle Dance as we review what happened in the observation hive on week two. It's been another incredible week in the observation hive. I've spent hours and hours watching every movement they make. But I'd be less than honest if I didn't say I'm a little disappointed at this point. I'm not disappointed with the bees or anything with regard to the project. I'm disappointed with our inability to see what's going on inside the hive. As I mentioned last week, 90% of the progress that has taken place in the hive has been done in the middle, in between the frames, out of our view. And now, instead of moving outside, the bees have moved up to the second level of frames and continue to work in the middle, out of view. Eventually, though, they'll come back down and they'll begin to work the outside of the lower frame. And while it might look like these bees on the lower frames are busy, and they are, until you see the structure and the order and the organization that is all built around the royal queen mother, you just can't appreciate everything that's happening inside the hive right now. Less than 100 yards from the beehive is a massive tree that is literally exploding in pollen. To stand under the tree and listen to the volume of buzz is pretty amazing experience. But the bees are busy gathering the pollen and flying back to the hive and really enjoying this tree for as long as it'll last. The bees are burning through the sugar water that we're giving them as a supplement just to help them through the initial stages until they build up the colony. The bees will go through a jar of sugar water this size in two and a half days. I don't have the can of Coke there so that I can amp up the bees on caffeine. I have it there so that you can gain an appreciation for how large that jar is. That's a half a gallon and so that you can appreciate how much food they consume. Bordering the beehive is a beautiful green pasture. That pasture welcomed a new foal into the world this week. And while out on a spring stroll, a ladybug paid our bees a visit. Let's go look at a beehive. Uncle, what are we going to do with the ladybug? We have to pick them up. Let's go look at a beehive. Bees in a colony work with each other to gather food. They try to find the most pollen and nectar in the least amount of time possible. Some flowers have more pollen and nectar than others. When a good flower patch is found, bees recruit other bees from their colony to that patch. Honeybees communicate flower location using special dances inside the hive. One bee dances while other bees watch to learn the direction to a specific flower patch. The returning dancing bee smells like the flower patch. And she also gives the watching bees a taste of the nectar and pollen that she gathered. The smell and taste helps the other bees find the exact flower patch that she had just returned from. Let's take a closer look at how this works. Bees communicate the precise location of their flower patch by doing the waggle dance. The waggle dance is a very precise figure eight dance that communicates the direction and distance of the flower patch. The angle of the actual waggle is the angle the bee needs to fly in relation to the sun where it is at at that moment in the sky. For example, if this is the angle of her waggle, that's the angle from the sun that the bees will take upon exiting the hive. Of course, when there's thick cloud cover, the waggle dance is not happening in the hive. 
But this past week, I also noticed that just when there's partial clouds, as soon as the sun disappears, the waggle dance stops. In addition to the direction the bee must travel to find the flower patch, the distance that the bee must travel is determined by the length of the waggle and the number of waggles. In this diagram, the waggle is in the same direction. The only difference is that the bee on the right would not travel as far in that direction. Okay, so let's watch this one more time in its entirety. Notice the direction of the waggle. Notice that it's a figure eight as she'll turn to her left and then to her right. Notice the audience she has that are paying attention to her directions. And finally, notice the exchange of nectar as she extends her tube-like tongue and lets the other bees taste the nectar that she's brought back to the hive. Here is the nectar being exchanged. I'll slow it down for you for a minute one more time. The happiness of the bee and the dolphin is simply to exist, said Jacques Cousteau. But for man, he said, happiness is to know that they exist and to wonder at their existence. If you step back only ten feet from the busy hive entrance, you hardly even notice the coming and going of an air force of little flying machines. But if you stop and look only on the horizon, you notice an air show that you would have never otherwise noticed. It's an amazing thing. <laughs>